Hi guys. Um, so today we're going to be going over the show commands, the point commands, or the commands that allow you to graph a point in 3D and in 2Space, um, the solve and end solve commands. Um, so the first part of this notebook is basically just me uh, setting a couple plots equal to a variable. Um, now it's going to be a new concept to y'all, um, but you, you can set pretty much almost anything in mathematics equal to, to a variable. Um, and you just denote that by using the equal sign right here. Um, you can also suppress this output by using the semicolon, and then the output is suppressed. I uh, don't, don't have to look at it. Um, so I have P1 equal to the plot of this quadratic function right here. Uh, the frame is true, it's red, the plot range is from minus 5 to 5. P2 is the plot of this function right here from the main of minus 5 to 5 plot range equals minus 5 to 5 plot style is green and the frame is true that's that has the the box around it pretty much um, so then I use the show command the show command allows me to use uh, graphics um, inputs like plotting into plot or plot 3D, contour plot, whatever really, as long as they're compatible to, to be put on together, um, you can do multiple graphs of any kind pretty much. Um, and that's done here with P2 and P1, and as, I, you, as you can see, um, the red and the green are showing up in this plot right here. So I'm going to change the plot range real quick of P2. I'm going to change it to minus 5 to 3. I want you to see what happens when I re-input this guy in. You can see that the plot range has gone down and it's accommodated itself the plot range at the first input. Alright, so this next part is me just saying, hey, I'm going to graph a Gaussian pretty much. Um, e to the minus x squared minus y squared. And I try to make I make sure it works by inputting 0, 0, and I get, by I should expect, 1 out of it. And then I plot it here, and that's just a normal Gaussian right there. And then I plot a point. A point is a graphics object, so it needs to have be in the, the command graphics 3D right here. Um, I denote the point size with this part of the command, the point color with this part, and the actual location of the point with uh, the last part right here. Um, this is all sent in a list. So, from that curly brace to this curly brace, the input of graphics 3D is for the point is contained. Um, then I use a manipulate command to show, hey, I have this point on the surface. I'm going to move it around a little bit and let's see what happens. So, x limit and y limit are the limits to which the function is being plotted for the plot 3D command here. X variable and Y variable is the input for the point. Um, and the point size is just point size. It's how, how large the point can be. Um, so this is done with the nuclear command. Uh, so I have G equals the input of X1 and then Y1. That's the X variable and Y variable respectively. And I have the show command. I have the plot 3D of the Gaussian and then the graphics 3D input right here. The command is then ended with these five variable inputs right here. So I can change the input of the point. And you can see what it does on the graph as the function distance. Um, as you can see, only the limit from 1 to 1 for both x and y is solved for for the plot 3D. So it's just a bunch of white space everywhere else. You can change it so that the x limit is plotted elsewhere, however. And that can be done just simply plotting it that way. Um, so this next part of the notebook goes over the solve and end solve command. Solve allows you to solve equations, uh, linear or nonlinear, coupled or non-coupled, fairly easily if they have an analytic solution or a solution that is um, something that, that doesn't need to be approximated numerically. 
So the first example is down right here. So I say to this guy, hey, I want you to solve 17x plus 8y equals 3, and the equation 8x plus 4y equals 0. I pass the variables x and y, and an option you can have for the solving is say, hey, I want you to solve over the domain of real numbers right here. Uh, a list is then um, shown, and, and it can contain in this list are are two rules. The rules for x going to 3 and y going to minus 6. In order to get the actual number for these rules out, say it's a really complex number, you don't want to copy it down, you can use um, the forward slash dot as a rule to get the guy out. So what this guy is really saying is, so I want you to replace x for when x goes to 3. It's contained in this saw one, one. Is x going to three, and then x three will place whatever wherever x is in the expression that you are trying to replace. Um, same thing known for y. However, when I try to get the first input and first uh, in the first row and column of this guy, um, I just get y back because there's nothing to replace y with. So I have to go to the second column, um, first row, second column, in order to actually get the, the rule that I need for that guy. Um, because that's the way the list right here is formatted. Um, and solve solves equations numerically. Um, so if you have trouble solving something analytically, or if not going to solve something analytically, you can do and solve, and it solves the equation using numerical methods. Um, in order to find out more about a uh, command in Mathematica, just remember put a question mark, um, put the command you want to know more, know more about, shift enter, gives you this information right here, the basic uh, command structure and basic information in the command itself. If you do two question marks, it gives you all the options as well. Though. Um, so I call solution n equals to this numerical so solution right here. And what you can see is that the solution goes to x is 59.3137. So I do the root approximation of this guy. And what I get, the root approximation allows me to convert from decimals to fractions. Um, so what I get is 3025 over 51. Um, and that's what you get from converting this guy to a fraction. And then I can do the integer part, which allows me to get to the closest integer that is the for the value contained within the expression, and that is done again with the the rule um, command as I showed you above. And now we do the end solve command for a function that doesn't may not have real solutions in its entirety, um, and that is these two equations right here for x and y. Um, so x. I can make sure that this guy is able to be solved for just real numbers by inputting the domain, reals, pushing shift enter, and then only, what? Hmm. Input the incorrect domain right there. My bad. Then only real solutions will be output it as a function, um, as the actual solution to this guy right here. So if, say if I want to get the second um, input for x right here, I could like try to figure out where it is using the matrix one for that. And I can see what or exactly it is and with the rows and columns. So I say, oh, this is in the second row, the first column. So I'm going to do x, so, um, going for the rule of forward slash dot, sol n1, which is what I call the actual numerical solution up here. Double bracket, 2 comma 1. And I should get 0 0.281168, and that is indeed where it's gone. Um, so that's basically the gist of what the, the show 
plotting points, um, solve and solve commands can be useful. If you want more information, you can always um, use the question mark or double question mark to find out more information about the options, command structure, and other miscellaneous things you'd like to know about it. Have a great day.